I'm Jason Maxwell. In 2022, my wife, three children and our two dogs relocated to Costa Rica for an adventure. Hi, just wanted to give you some information about the border runs, about the processes that you go through, some helpful advice maybe along the way if it's your first time. Well, the first time we did our border run, we were living in the north of Costa Rica in Tamarindo. And Rachel and I uh, did it on separate occasions because of childcare reasons. I went first and we'd heard lots of things about the border run. We'd heard that you needed to have lots of dollars. We'd heard that there were lots of different stages. So I went first. Wasn't quite sure what to expect. Was picked up by our bus that we'd organised. Lots and lots of um, organisations and bus journeys and companies that are geared up to taking gringos like myself across the border to be able to renew their passports so that they can continue to drive in the uh, in Costa Rica. That's quite crazy in itself. The fact that you have to have this 90-day border run stamp in your passport at all. It's something to do with the falling out of the transport department and the immigration department. And what it boils down to is that um, if you are in Costa Rica, you are treated, even though we are residents in application, treated as tourists. And as tourists, your visa only lasts 90 days. So that 90 days gives you the legal right to drive without a 90 days passport stamp the police can take away your driver's license plates on the vehicle. As I said, I went first, picked up by my bus, paid $50 for the trip there and back. It did say that we'd guide you through the various stages, but that didn't happen. But that wasn't a problem, as I imagine all of those buses are predominantly filled with lots of expats, who have been living here for many years who still continue to go over the border every three months to get their passports. When you live somewhere like Tamarindo, it makes it much easier to do because it is just a jump over the border. It's a lot harder in part, uh, down in the south because Panama requires a few more hoops to have to jump through, least of which is not that you have to stay for three days before you're allowed to um, come into the country. So I get on the bus, off I go, hour and a half journey, with a stop in Liberia to go to the toilet and get something to eat. Jump back on the bus, off we go. I've made a few friends at this which point. Which was very helpful, people with experience, to guide me through it as it was my first stage, very green. And off we went, got to the border, went through the various stages, simple enough going out of Costa Rica. No dollars required there, just a passport stamp exiting. A bit of a hike across the no man's land in between. But there is a little booth waiting for you where you have to pay some dollars, get a receipt to show you've gone through that. And I never quite could work out whether that was part of the Costa Rican border or whether it was part of the uh, Nicaraguan border. So that's where we went through first, paid probably a couple, maybe five dollars. In all it was about a kilometre where we were greeted by a very impressive building outside of which we had to present our PCR tests. The lady at the window just waved me through having looked at my piece of paper, uh, gave me another receipt and there was a throng of people waiting to get into the building, into the passport control office at this Maybe time. 200 people, a bit of a bottleneck because everyone's got to go through the little PCR passport window and everyone's got to get in the doors. Now on our way to the door we were met by another gentleman who um, took maybe $14 from us having looked at our PCR certificate and wrote that's another receipt. With all these receipts in hand we eventually shuffled our way through to entering Nicaragua and their passport control, got our stamps, paid an entry tax, no more than $14 I believe. Moved through that literally did a loop back round and came toward the exit Nicaragua passport control. Straightforward enough, got our stamp exiting Nicaragua and me and my uh, friend that I'd met on the bus at this time, we were both newbies. So we made our way back across no man's land without having to meet any officials or anything like that along the way, having to pay any more dollars. 
And when we got back, we couldn't find the entry point to the Costa Rican passport control. We looped around the building, found the bank, found the ATM, found other places that were all closed. It was a Sunday, so everything was closed. By the time we'd looped around this building, we found ourselves standing next to the bus that we'd come uh, from Tamarindo on, where everybody else was waiting, realising that we'd actually got back into Costa Rica without being challenged or having to go through any passport control. We were laughing about it when I realised, of course, that we didn't have our very important passport stamp uh, of entry into Costa Rica. So off we go with uh, being told where the entry office was, right next to the bank, right wedged in the corner. So we go through there, get our stamp, no more dollars to part with, come through, ready to drive for another 90 days. In total, that cost me in dollars no more than 26 to 30 dollars having to go through all of that plus the 50 dollars it cost to go on the bus now they're the upfront costs it's worth remembering that also to go through the nicaraguan border you need to have a pcr test now to get back into costa rica you also have to show that you have the means to leave again within 90 days. And what this means is that you have a ticket showing them that you are leaving again in 90 days. So it's a cycle that you have to be on top of. So this is another cost. There are multiple ways of doing it. On my journey to the first time to Nicaragua and across the border and back, I had a bus ticket showing I was leaving Costa Rica again in 90 days and I presented that. Um, I also had to tell them my uh, address of residence, which is a bit of a joke because addresses here are more of a, an estimation of location than they are an actualization of an address as you probably know it in the UK. There we are, passport stamp done, all good. My wife, following week, she went and did hers very different experience for her altogether. She went through the same company, the same process, met some helpful people that were gonna guide her through her process. And when she applied the PCR proof of testing, and the lady scanned her PCR test and said no, telling her that she had, her PCR test was a forge. Um, so Rachel went through everything she had to try and prove this, was getting quite irate, wasn't prepared to back down because she felt to be in the right about this whole situation. Same was true at the other end and the lady would not budge on the other side of the window and obviously there's a bit of a, a bottleneck piling up and people's frustrations are probably piling up. As this is unfolding, a gentleman steps forward, a, an official, at this PCR test window and not being allowed in because the lady is saying that her PCR test is forged, this gentleman steps forward and says, you can have another PCR test now for $150. So luckily Rachel is with a few people, but between them, they don't have $150. The suggestion of walking back to the Costa Rican border where there is an ATM is put before them. Uh, but as they're doing this, they're looking at how much money they have. And between them, they have about $100 plus what they need to go through the various loops ahead of them. So the gentleman uh, from, the, uh, from the Nicaraguan border steps forward and offers an alternative suggestion. He suggests that Rachel can pay him $100 and not have the PCR test. Now obviously the PCR test involved going back to the, the Costa Rican border, getting that $150 from the ATM, coming back, going through all those checkpoints again. At this point, they were going to be late for their bus if they did that. So, and obviously the cheaper option was the easier option also. So they went for that option. So that was our journey into the Nicaraguan border, uh, uh, into the Nicaraguan border post for our first border run to get our first Restamp of a 90 days in our passports. What you need to go through that Nicaraguan border with is somebody who can guide you through. It, it can be done, it's just easier. If you get on a bus, as we did, there are maybe 90% of the people that are on there are expats who have done this many times before. Many people have been doing this for years. So there's not a shortage of people who to offer or to walk through the process with. So as you go through that, you will need your fistful of dollars to be able to pay the various 
pieces, $30, the smaller those dollars can be and change the more useful to you. You will need your passport, of course. You will need your proof of PCR testing. You will need your uh, address of residency in Costa Rica for when you get back. And you will also need proof that you are leaving Costa Rica again in 90 days to re-entry Costa Rica. That in hand, all those things, including the residency, the bus, I mean, it does mount up a bit, the PCR testing, the ticket out of the country again. I mean, I got my bus ticket out of Costa Rica as proof of leaving for $22. So it is doable on the cheap, but it will cost somewhat. Now, take us forward uh, three months where Rachel and myself now have to do our second border run, and we've moved to the southern part of the country a province called Osa um, and from there the closest border is Panama but as I described you have to go through that border for a minimum of two nights three days and there are many companies that can help you uh, do this but the price mounts up when we looked at it it was a something like five and a half hundred dollars each it's including the accommodation but you don't know what accommodation you're going to be walking into now, we didn't want to go that long and leave our children or be on our own either. And my father-in-law had been staying and we were going to be taking him back to San Jose in the international airport, which is in the capital city. So we decided to take our youngest and catch a flight to Guatemala instead. The cost of that was slightly cheaper than us both going to Panama um, and we'd either have to do that with all our children or on our own and individually, which neither of us wanted to do again particularly. So we jumped on an aeroplane while dropping my father-in-law or law off in San Jose and jumped up to Guatemala for, I think it was about $100 each on the aeroplane. Stayed in a hotel near the Guatemala airport, had a lovely city break, didn't travel more than five kilometers from the airport, spent the day in the zoo with our little one, jumped on an airplane and came back. That was cheaper than going through the Panama route from this end of the country, but we're gonna to have to reconsider what we do next time because we won't have the convenience of dropping my father-in-law back at the airport. So I hope this has been helpful. It is very doable and it depends on which part of the country you live to which direction you should go. And dollars are always involved in this. So bear that in mind. It's going to require tickets back in, out of Costa Rica, no matter which border you come in and out of. I'll add the links below for the company we used on our first journey as we jumped over the border into Nicaragua and back within the space of half a day. But there are also companies that can guide you through that much more. There are companies offering it for about $65 to $70 that will also guide you through those various checkpoints. So you can take that option also. I will put some links in below for the, both of those options. So I hope you found that useful. Tune in for a few more of these sorts of videos and I'll catch up with you soon.